Hi, everybody. My name is Ida Vong. I am a sake specialist for Sake School of America. And um, I, today I am joined by Team Noguchi and as well as Toshio Ueno, who is the co-founder of Sake School of America and our lead instructor. Um, very quickly, I'm going to go ahead and introduce you guys to Team Noguchi. So we have the company president. We have Huma Asano-san, and he'll be, I think, in the background once in a while. He'll also probably say hi. There, he, there we go. <laughs> He'll probably give a closing statement as well. Um, we're also joined by presenter and brand ambassador, Gordon Hetty. That is the person you see on screen, uh, labeled main camera. And we also have a special guest today. Her name is Phoebe Amoroso, and she'll be joining us a little bit later on. And Gordon will be giving a more in-depth uh, introduction to her. And we're also joined by our assistant for today and the marketing manager, Kakashi Iwai-san. So you'll also see him kind of scuttling around. <laughs> there he is. Very professional looking today. Very nice. <laughs> um, to give you a really quick overview, um, basically today we're going to do a short recap on what Noguchi Sake Institute is. Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute, right? Um, for those who have missed out last time. So we'll talk a little bit about that and the philosophy about it and how it came about. And then we will finally dive into the sake experience and tasting experience of the tasting room, pull on. So Gordon will lead us through that. He'll give us an introduction about the tasting room, um, a little bit about the uh, kind of experience you'll have as you arrive and throughout the whole tasting um, session. And we also have a really cool uh, sex segment, basically, where they are going to try sake rice. They're going to eat steamed sake rice. Um, and I'm really curious to hear what it tastes like. I heard it doesn't taste very good and table rice is much better, but we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, all right. So, Gordon, go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Ada. Uh, we're so grateful to partner with you and Ueno-san and everyone at the Mutual Trading, and we're so grateful to have this platform uh, to present our brewery. Thank you. Um, I'm Gordon Hetty, a former Kurobito or brewery worker, and now the brand ambassador, which is a dream come true for this amazing brewery. And today um, I'm going to present our brewery and our sakes to America and to everyone around the world. Uh, the brewing season is now finished and Noguchi Toji has returned to his home in Noto Peninsula for some much deserved rest. And today, I'd like to introduce you to our Toan experience. It's a sake experience that we offer in our tasting room called Toan. Before I begin, uh, I would like for those of you not familiar with our institute to watch a movie. So let's start the movie. It's a short two minute movie that captures briefly what we're doing.
Wow, that brings back so many great memories. Uh, really, well, one of the most special times of my life uh, is uh, making sake for Noguchi, known as a legendary sake master, or to some, the god of sake brewing. Uh, Noguchi became a toji in 1961 and has uh, numerous awards and honors, including 27 gold medals at the Japan Sake Awards. Uh, such a staggering number and has been identified by the government as a master craftsman of the modern world. Uh, furthermore, Noguchi earned the Medal of Honor with yellow ribbon from the Emperor of Japan, which is, I quote, awarded to individuals who through their diligence and perseverance while engaging in their professional activities uh, became public role models. This is part of uh, why and how he has spent more than 70 years of his life brewing sake. Uh, here's our Koji Muro. Uh, it gets as hot as 51 degrees Celsius, which is about just over 140 degrees Fahrenheit, if I'm not mistaken. And to um, spend 200 days helping him is really one of the highlights of my life, but boy, it's tough work. So much respect for these workers. The characteristics of the sake Noguchi has made has changed with the times as the generations of our customers have changed. Now, at the age of 88, Noguchi and his disciples are striving to create sake that will please not only people from Japan, but people from around the world. About our location, the new brewery was established in the winter of 2017. Uh, Noguchi Toji was recruited by Asano-san to lead our design and production. So to be clear, Noguchi Toji is not the owner of the brewery, which is the common scenario in Japan. Noguchi fell in love with the nature of Komatsu uh, and the mountainous area with clear water. So it's Noguchi Toji himself who chose this place. Our water comes from a well deep beneath the brewery. It is considered slightly soft water Especially given that we are in the foothills, this is a bit of a surprise. And it's part of the Hakusan water supply. Hakusan is one of the three holy mountains of Japan. In fact, the Hakusan region is so special to sake brewing that it was the first region in Japan to gain a special geographical indication for sake uh, in 2005 from the National Tax Agency. This geographical indication is a sign on products that have a specific geographical origin and possess qualities or reputation that are due to its point of origin. We hope that you can visit us someday. Uh, as you can see, it takes about 20 minutes by taxi from Komatsu Station and 30 minutes from Komatsu Airport to visit us. Now about our brewery. Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute was established with the vision of passing on to the next generation the skills, spirit, and way of life of Noguchi. Noguchi saw, oversaw, I should say, everything from the design stage, and today our brewery fulfills this model. There is a gallery where you can see many photos and a timeline of Noguchi Toji's grandfather's days. He was also a Toji, as was his father dating back to the 1800s, and also Noguchi's 70 years of brewing sake. From the windows of our gallery, guests can glimpse the sake breweries at work, as well as view the walls of the brewery, where there are some inspirational quotes from our toji, which have been translated as follows. Quote, brew sake honestly and with love. The important part of brewing is that you put your care into it. The Koji isn't going to talk back, so it's on you to be completely honest about your work. If you try to cut corners, you will never be truly successful. Connect with the work, even if you have to sprinkle yourself into it. The Koji, the yeast, they are connected to you. If you can't feel that, then you can't make good sake. Don't try to force your own conventions onto it either. It will not follow you. Whenever I think I've understood the brewing of sake, it turns out 
I don't. It is an unknown. And if I didn't start, I absolutely wouldn't learn. Unquote. Let's go back to our tasting room now. And I'd like to make an introduction. Phoebe, if you could join me. This is Phoebe. Thank you so much for coming today, Phoebe. Hi, everyone. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Won't you please introduce yourself? Oh, uh, where to start? So um, my name is Phoebe. I'm from the UK, and I've been working as a journalist out in Japan for the past few years. Um, I basically, I love food and sake, which is uh, why Gordon <laughs> kindly invited me in here today. So a lot of my work, work or hobby or putting them together. <laughs> my, uh, my father always said, if you love your work, you never work again. So maybe I just eat and drink my work. No. But uh, um, kind of, I was late to drinking alcohol in my life, actually, despite mm. being British, was never very good at drinking beer. But um, over the past few years, I just grew to really love sake. I started studying a little bit last year. And uh, the world of sake is so deep. I feel I'm just swimming at the surface mm. and I'm looking forward to diving even mm. deeper going forward. Thank you, Phoebe. Uh, more about our Toan, a proper introduction. Uh, Kamatsu was the site of Kamatsu Castle, which was built by the third lord of the Maeda family, Maeda Toshitune, after he handed over the governorship to his son. So it was Toshitune who made efforts to establish various traditional crafts and cultures. And as part of his efforts, he invited Senso, a great grandson of the famous Sen no Ryuku from Kyoto to serve as tea ceremony master. This tea ceremony theme is gonna permeate what we're talking about today. Since then, Kamatsu has been a place where the tea ceremony has flourished. And this is the concept behind our sake experience. The counter we are sitting on is the same size as a tea room. Traditionally in a tea room, there's also the toko, uh, toko noma, and where you can hang a scroll and observe the season. But if we could ping to our other camera, you'll be able to see our view much more clearly. In our room, the Tokonoma wall is actually our window so that you can enjoy the seasons of uh, nature with a great view. By the way, Toan translates as hermitage of the Toji. So today uh, we invite you to visit our room. Come to our Toan. Now I'd like to explain briefly the contents of today's sake experience, uh, which is divided into three sections. And you can unpin the camera if you wish. <laughs> um, the first is today's sake. Uh, we'll be served a selection of the Toan's recommended sake. The second, we can compare sakes on a tasting board. And the third is uh, how to drink traditional sake. Um, and then as we're drinking, um, we'll be able to take our second camera and show people actually uh, better the food that we're drinking, uh, the food that we're eating and the vessels that we're drinking from. So as I look at the Zoom camera, um, can you see me okay? Yes, yes, we can see you. Okay, great. Uh, let's talk about Yabaragi no Mizu. Uh, First of all, we are poured water from the basin. It's pumped up from the ground. It's the same sake that we brew from. And to say yawaragi no mizu, it's softening water to soften the effects of drinking too much alcohol. Uh, the water is actually stored overnight in this beautiful suzu ware, which is fired in suzu city. It gives the water a slightly more mellow taste. Um, we should have a sip of water before we begin. Maybe the water will come later. <laughs> oh, yeah, I would love a glass of water. Is it possible? Um, sake brewing, of course, requires a great deal of water in natural land. One of the highest priorities is the quality of the water. So after we conducted various surveys around Komatsu City, it was Noguchi Toji himself who chose this land in this spot. The 
the water actually fell as snow and rain on the Hakusan mountain range uh, about 70 years ago. And over the last 70 years, it penetrated the earth and picked up uh, various minerals, which are beneficial to the brewing of sake. And this long natural process of fermentation, um, we think it's the ideal water for making sake. Thank you. My mouth is dry. <laughs> Let's talk about today's sake. Our first sake today is only available at our tasting room. It's freshly pressed sake from the Yubuda press, which you might normally see behind me, directly behind me. And it is our Junmai Daiginjo. It is not yet bottled. You have to come to our sake brewery to actually taste it. By the way, for visitors who drive to the brewery, we do have a house-made amazake which is uh, a non-alcoholic sake, if you will. It's a health drink. So people can come here and be a designated driver and enjoy something also that's unique to the tasting room experience, Noguchi Toji's Amazake. So let's please try. Oh. Let's have a kanpai. Oh, man. Kanpai. Hi. Thank you so much. We envy you. <laughs> oh, it's got a wonderful scent even before we start mm -hmm. drinking it. Amazing. Uh, I want to comment a little bit about our serving ware. It was chosen for many varieties to feature the elements of particular sakes, the thickness of the lip, uh, the shape of the cup, and it further enhances what we we'll believe are the best sakes in the world. They are made by local artisans. Ishikawa is quite famous for ceramics and lacquerware, and this is where almost all of our serving work comes from. Some of our cups actually cost hundreds of dollars. Oh my God. However, you should feel free and try our sakes in any cup or wine glass that you wish. Uh, this sake, what do you think? Well, it, it, smelled, it smelled a little bit fruity before I started yeah. drinking it. But I love the really dry and crisp finish. Yes. It kind of starts off um, lighter and it kind of cuts very cleanly. And there's a, an acidity that means yeah. that what I thought would be initially a little sweet is actually much on the drier side. It starts and off I, sweet. It does start off sweet and finish dry. Yes, it goes in that kind of arc. And because it comes right from our Yubuda press, it has some slightly effervescent quality. Nikiyaka or sparkling that I really love. It's 100% Yamada Nishiki from Gogo, and the Semai Buai or rice polishing ratio is 50%. It's unfiltered, unpasteurized. So even though the alcohol is a little high at 18%, the cool temperature and the overall quality of the sake won't bother you so much. And as the temperature of the sake rises in the glass, um, the aroma also rises and it changes. So we encourage you to sip this over time. And then I think we have a special French caviar that might be paired with us today. I'm very excited about this caviar pairing. Mm, my ears have pricked up. <laughs> <laughs> this is, you know, I've been drinking sake for 30 years. I've been brewing sake in Japan off and on for five years. And this caviar pairing I thought was really amazing. Um, we have also um, a tasting board pairing. Now, first we're pouring our Yamaha and Yama Nishiki into a Katani Ware sake cup. Oh, actually, no, we're taking the second sake, excuse me. The first sake was the Junmai Daiginjo that's only available here. The second one is our second Junmai Daiginjo, which is available to people around the world, including the United States. And it's being paired with, I think, a very wonderful uh, caviar from France. Um, I want to hold it closely to the camera. It's called Asturia. It's a really nice camera, a really nice caviar, I should say. So please, we think you should take a sip of the sake. And then after the sake, please try the caviar. So I'll try this, I'll try this one first. Please, then. please, please. Okay. Oh, it's got a lighter scent than the other one. Mm. Oh, oh my God. Oh. 
it's like a religious experience. <laughs> so I'll have to keep going. I can't keep drinking, but thankfully Phoebe is here to help with the drinking. I'm not keeping up with you here. Yeah, I haven't no. tried the caviar yet. Please go, go, go. Go for it. Uh, let's keep pouring some of our sake to move the agenda along. Uh, next we pour our Yamaha and Yama Nishiki. So I'm just going to interrupt to oh. say that pairing is <laughs> phenomenal. I'm sorry, yeah, Jordan, no, I just need no. to tell everyone that that was one of the most harmonious sake pairings I've ever tried. Yeah. Um, I, I can't explain it, but the, the sake is more full-bodied than the other daigin, daigin yeah. sake. And then the, the caveat is just like, hello, I'm sliding in to yeah. welcome you to, as you that, said, a religious experience. That, that, I'm there. that, that full bodied uh, sake comes from 2018, and it's one of the sakes I helped brew for Noguchi Toji. Um, so it's a vintage sake, you know, it's three years old. Mm. So we have to brave forward. <laughs> now we have the Yamada Nishiki uh, Yamaha, Yamaha and Yama Nishiki to Katani Ware Sake Cut made by Seito Tamura, a 40-year-old female artist of Komatsu. Inside of the cup, which I think is very unique, she has written a haiku poem from Basho uh, that was written on one of his two trips to Komatsu City. We think it's really a gorgeous cup. Um, this is also brewed or from rice harvested in 2018 and aged for three years and made with Miyama Nishiki from Nagano Prefecture. The rice polishing ratio is 55%. Next, let's pour the Ayama. It's a sake rice and this one comes from Hyogo actually. And it comes into a Notojima glass from the Noto Peninsula. The, the rice polishing ratio in the yeast is the same as it was before with the Miyama Nishiki and the vintage is the same. Next, we pour the Yamaha Go Chakuman Goku into another Katani Ware cup from Komatsu. And this cup is extra special. It costs quite high, and it's made by a living national treasure, Mr. Minori Yoshita. To be a living national treasure is really a rare honor from the government for makers of crafts like uh, steel and paper. And in the realm of pottery, there exists only nine. A funny story, uh, Yoshida-san and Noguchi Toji are both the same age. And when they see each other, Yoshida-san is so happy. It turns out he loves sake. And he says, whenever he sees Noguchi Toji's face, he always wants to drink sake. <laughs> yeah. The rice polishing ratio here is 65% in the Goyaku Mangoku. And the yeast is different. And then the temperature we serve for these three sakes is the same. It's 10 Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit. So, so please try, P. Oh my goodness. Do you, do you have an order that I should be trying these in? Try well, left to right. Left to right? Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm getting very nervous about the price of this cup. So <laughs> I'm just gonna... It. Don't drop <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, let's try the one with the, the Yamaha um, Yamanishiki. We also have prepared some snacks to go with this, but we recommend tasting the sake and then going to the snacks. So I'll mention the snacks now. With the Miyama, we have pickled blowfish and sake leaves. Uh, it's actually the, the eggs of the blowfish. And with the Ayama, we have a Kotaro Ika. It's a firefly squid in Shiokara. And the Goihakaman Goku. Uh, what's with the Goihakaman Goku? Oh, excuse me. The Koi Hakaman Goku is the pickled uh, eggs from the blowfish. And the first dish is actually just pickled blowfish. So the, on to your left, Phoebe, it's pickled blowfish. Right, Sorry okay. for the miscommunication. <laughs> this has just arrived in front of me, so I wasn't able to yeah. even know. <laughs> All right, shall I give it, uh, give it a try and share my eat, opinions? Eat, eat as you wish. Okay, well, I'm just wanting to jump into your excellent explanation. No, it's fine. Okay, we have some pickled uh, fugu here, which I think is my first time trying oh. um, blowfish pickled. I've had it um, raw, which is often served with ponzu, a citrus dipping sauce. Yeah. That's fantastic. So let's see how it is. So for, for people who aren't familiar, blowfish, pufferfish, fugu, 
I guess even glow fish to some, they're all the same fish. There's something interesting about this fish. Um, I'll, I'll save it for a little bit later. Oh, I was about to jump yeah. in and maybe. Yeah, please keep talking. Jump ahead. Keep talking. Well, if it's not prepared correctly, I will die in about one minute's time. <laughs> so you will know if I peel over that this was badly prepared. Yeah. <laughs> just no, I'm, just I'm don't, not... uh, don't knock the cups over. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. my life, my life is Yeah, I'm disposable, but this cup, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, that was. Is it pickled in sake? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's it's a pickled in sake leaves. So you've got that. I always think of it as a. I don't know if a flavor can be warm, but that's how it kind of. It's got this kind of muskiness mm -hmm. that I really love in sake kazu, and it also makes me think of drinking. Amasake as well, like on a cold winter's day at a festival. Yes. Uh, let's see how it pairs with this beautiful Yamakai Yamanishi. That is another excellent pairing. So when I tried that first, yeah, it was more on the uh, on the sweeter sweeter side, but I wouldn't say it was sweet because it has a kind of acidity that cuts yeah. through towards the end. Again, it's a sake that. You can't get bored drinking it because you go on this little journey yeah. uh, over <laughs> just one mouthful. So now, even though the sake kazu in around the uh, bluefish makes it a little bit sweet, that brings out the kind of makes the sake a little bit sharper in contrast, which is interesting because I felt like it changed. I don't know. You yeah. can disagree with me. I, I, I completely agree. And what I like about the Miyama Nishiki, it has a grassy or even sometimes a vegetable quality to it that's enhanced by pairing it with this. Um, mm, I would agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, there's an earthiness to it. And it is a Yamahai, and the Noguchi Toji is quite famous um, and significant because as Yamahai was starting to decrease and almost become an extinct way to make sake, a Noguchi Toji is often credited with reviving it. And so if you enjoy a Yamahai style sake, which is uh, typically a more robust sake made in a traditional way, uh, we have to give our tip of the hat to Noguchi Toji for doing that. Now, we have two other dishes that I'm going to let Phoebe taste. But while Phoebe's tasting these dishes and thinking about it, I would like to go to this traditional way of sake tasting. Um, here in the old days, the month of May was a time when illnesses increased due to the change of the seasons. And this is when the flower iris was prized. Even today, iris baths are a popular tradition. The real benefit of irises is that they are not only decorative, but also have a medicinal properties. Uh, the unique fragrance is said to be healing. The slender leaves of this iris, they're, they're cut like swords. And this shape of the iris leaf symbolizes cutting off evil spirits and repelling disease. And with this sake, we chose our Junmai, and we are serving it at a slightly warm temperature. Mm. Perhaps my favorite cup. This is a tin cup, if you will. It's suzu or tin, and it's a little bit wobbly. If, if you touch it a little bit, watch it move. It won't tip over, but I think that's quite uh, endearing. <laughs> <laughs> they told me not to play with my food, and I want to play with my drink. Wow, that's amazing. I don't, I don't think I've ever had a wobbly cup. I've mm. had a sake cup before; it's shaped like a cone, and you have to put it in a little holder. Yeah. Or you just have to keep drinking it. I'm not sure if that's just a trick to make <laughs> you drink more because you can't put it down. It might be. So I, I don't mean to rush you, but oh. tell us about the hotara. Okay, Hika, hang on, hang on. Sorry, I'm going to try to sake afterwards. Sorry, so yeah. I'm, I'm getting very involved with this. Oh, okay, so the Hotaruika, which is the firefly squid, and it's uh, famous in this area of Toyama, which is along the coast. Um, it's got this wonderful sweetness to it, and it gets uh, kind of the flavor of the squid. It's kind of it's, it's smooth and salty as well with the texture. It all kind of combines together. And then it, I feel like it makes the Yamahai smooth as well. Yes, yeah, smoother and, in my opinion, sweeter. Um, because of how it's been prepared and to show you, it has a surprisingly pleasant sweet taste. And I'm not one for a sweet taste, but this one is changing my mind. 
<laughs> yeah, when I first tried it before trying the Utareika, I got that kind of um, earthy vegetable quality that you mentioned from the previous sake, but now it's much smoother and sweeter, mm -hmm. which is great fun, but you have it's like having six different sakes and following this trip. Oh, I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna have the six. Nine men with the pairing. Yeah. That's that's I think one of the beauties of sake for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the sake finds hidden flavor in the food. The food finds hidden flavor in the sake. And we benefit from this relationship when sake and food is paired well. I want to show the camera a little bit about what she's having. This is a really wonderful product. Uh, it's really unique. Uh, I want to really recommend it to people, especially uh, people in the United States because it's so rare. Uh, it's an amazing fugu um, product. Basically it's pickled uh, eggs. And this is the only company in Japan or the world that has been approved by the government to bring this product to you because fugu is a poisonous fish and the eggs are actually poisonous as well. But this company, I think it's from Tokyo, they've been in business for a long time and the government has verified that they have a unique method of preparing the eggs so that it's not actually poisonous. They're the only company that does it. So if you want to try pickled fugu eggs, you have to come here. So please tell us <laughs> what oh. do you think? <laughs> um, when I tried this Yamaha um, Gohiyaku Mangoku Festival, um, its acidity I felt really stood out above the other two. They're all acidic with the Yamaha. Um, yeah. But again, with the, the fugu um, eggs, they are they're like a salty punch, but in a a gentle punch, as it were. They're not yeah. they're not out to completely overwhelm you with the saltiness. And what's the really nice thing is that you can still taste the the element of the sea and the yeah. fish itself. And then again, I find the sake has got smoother and sweeter afterwards. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, it's really special. And it's um, got a, a lot of umami. This one. Oh, we're really trying to achieve a mommy with this one. I think the salt in the in the in the the, the blowfish eggs. I think it really enhances the mommy quality of our sake. This is this is an umami bomb. This yeah. is an umami bomb. It's fantastic. So I want to move forward just to keep the agenda going. Um, we do have uh, a sakamai tasting. This is extremely rare. So we're basically having some rice that's been prepared and it's the same rice that the sake was prepared from, if you will. It's in a red bowl made of Yamanaka lacquerware. It's Gohyakuman Goku, which is used to bruise our Junmai sake and it's cooked. However, it's quite rare to have such a cooked rice be so fluffy because we're used to rice being sticky, whether it's sushi rice or table rice but this rice isn't sticky at all. It's actually quite fluffy and the rice doesn't stick together so much. Here, I like to explain a little bit about the difference between uh, our sake rice and food rice or table rice. First of all, the sake rice, it grows taller and larger. And please feel free, I want you to eat. <laughs> all right, I will, I will eat. <laughs> The grains of the rice are larger and it's more difficult to grow. And if you look at the sake rice, you can see little rooms or spaces under a microscope. This is a high occurrence of shinpaku, the cloudy part of the starch. And it is this mechanism by which koji uh, enters the hollow space to become koji rice, to make that transformation. The characteristic of sake rice is that it's not chewy or sticky and it's difficult to grow, like I mentioned. It's also um, very, um, how do I say? It's not profitable for a lot of the rice growers. So, so please tell us, what do you think of this rice? Oh, it's a texture that I've never experienced before when it comes to rice. <laughs> me too, me too. Um, so I was listening to explanation there whilst sort of trying to process what was going on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> because it, it's not sticky, it's not as dense, it's much lighter, the yes. grain is larger, and it's, it's, it's soft without being stodgy. So 
all I can say is it's a texture of rice that I have not experienced, um, but it also has a really pleasant flavor in its own right. And before I lived in Japan, I had no concept <laughs> that rice really had different flavors because people are very particular about what kind of brand of rice they buy in areas that promote themselves based on their rice. And back in my, my ignorant days before I fully understood Japanese food, and I still don't fully understand, of course, but a bowl of white rice just wasn't exciting to me. No. And now I've come to this stage where <laughs> I'm there dissecting the, the texture of it as well. Um, it just goes to show the wonderful variety and flavors that they have in rice here. Yeah. And um, that's really special. Thank you for sharing that oh, with me. Yeah, what a wonderful comment. Um, I should mention the semi buai or the rice polish of this. Um, the food rice, well, how do I say it's been polished to 90% the rice that PBD and then the Junmai sake rice the same rice is polished to 60% I guess now it's almost time for dessert I'll let you finish you know take your time I'm going to talk about dessert I haven't tried this and before. really quickly what is the the side dish that Phoebe is eating with the rice yeah, I'm kind of intrigued actually oh yeah it's um we, we, we had this for dinner last night. It's the, um, is this the shiso? Yeah, excuse me. I don't have my glasses on. It's pickled shiso. Shiso, but shiso seeds. Yeah. Seeds, right? I've never tried, I think, the seeds before because shiso, the leaves, are very particular. You yeah. get their flavor immediately. Um, this, it's got a very slight crunchy texture and a little bit <laughs> of a floral element to it. Yeah. And it's a brilliant contrast to the rice. And um, what I love is that, particularly I think in Asian cuisines, is that texture is valued as much as flavor. And yeah. um, that's something that I didn't uh, appreciate until much later on in life. And the textural pairing is spot on in this case. It's just fantastic. <laughs> so I'm not trying to make you jealous or anything, but it's really good. I'm jealous and I'm sitting just too oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And really quickly before you move on, I need to know, Phoebe, would you ever swap out your regular table rice with this sake rice? Oh, good question. oh, that is a really good question. I think I would. I think it would depend on what dish as well. Um, I feel like, hmm, I feel like for something maybe that's got a lot of sauce, I would prefer the denser rice yeah. um, because I think like this is much lighter. The sauce will kind of drain through and get a bit lost. But um, definitely also, I think if you're not wanting to feel as heavy because of the lighter texture, um, it's definitely a good option. I would really like to experiment and see what pairings would work as well. Interesting. It's going to cost you a lot to switch to sake rice, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two or three times as much, right? Uh, oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> And I also, I suppose there's not a lot to spare in years where there are sake rice shortages as well. Yeah, it's true. Um, as you know, we have 105 or so, you know, the number changes every year, different kinds of uh, sake rice. Goigaka Mangoku has been one of the most popular sake rices, especially in the Hokuriku region where we're located. Um, I think it's time for dessert. We're going to serve dessert, but, um, oh, I should ask you, what do you think of this? It's the Irish socket. I'm so excited. Yeah. I want to jump out my chair. <laughs> I have high energy levels, which is good because it's what, eight in the morning here? Yeah. Um, hang on, one moment, one more time. <laughs> so this is the sake that has traditionally been served in May and it has the iris flowers cut to look like swords. It says, hello, I'm the dry taste of summer. Like yeah. welcoming <laughs> in the summer, that kind of dry crispness. Um, a slight fizziness to it, um, almost so dry and acidic that you, you almost feel like it's going to become citrusy afterwards and then it kind yeah. of cuts. It's, it's fantastic and it feels really great to hold this cup. Not only does it roll around but the weightiness yeah. kind of, it, it's, there's a lot to be said. Um, I'm, I'm a, you, this is why Gordon invited me as well. I'm going to get a little bit <laughs> geeky about certain things. And one thing that I really want to research more is how even um, when you touch something, it can affect the taste. Yeah. I went to a very experimental dining event a few years ago where we had to bring a mushroom soup out of a cup that was furry. Apparently when you touch something furry, things taste creamier. 
So I think very much also the plating and everything served from like drinking from a thinner glass changes how the flavor, the taste hits your palate. And uh, for me, it's very comforting to hold this. <laughs> so that's probably not the common to No, no, I feel the same comfort. I, I have a cup like this at home. You wanna hug it. This is, this is a little bit of a hug. Yeah. Because it's made of tin, it also has a way to retain the temperature differently. So I prefer drinking a cold drink, a cold sake out of the Suzu or the tin cup. So I, I can't eat, I can't drink, I can only make a presentation. So I have to go forward and talk about the dessert. But as we talk about the dessert, more about the influence of the tea ceremony. In a normal tea ceremony, the tea confectionery or the sweet, it's usually served as what we call namagashi. However, since today is a sake experience, we have prepared sake confections, which is quite unusual to go with the sake. Uh, Mr. Hironobu Yukimatsu, the seventh generation owner of his shop, created these pairings personally with the toji. He says it's the first time in his family's history that they ever prepared a confection to be mashed with sake. It is said in a tea ceremony, the sweet should not overwhelm the tea and they should look most beautiful when they are served. So it is with sake. The confection must not overpower the sake. These are created and paired to make a unique flavor that is complete only when it is combined with sake. And we're going to combine them here shortly in a unique way. The round sweets are fuyaki senbei, a rice cracker coated with molasses. It's called a takamatsu, which is inspired by the pine trees of Komatsu. Komatsu itself means a little pine. This rice confection is also covered with sugar and hardened with molasses. This square confectionery is called seka. Our tiny village, so small, uh, dozens of homes, but not more. It has quarry, uh, a quarry where they mine or rock, they take stone out of the mountain. And this stone is called Nika stone. The national parliament building uses about 160 tons of this stone from our village. And the confectionery is named Nika and it's in the shape of this Nika stone. Uh, the yellow color that you see comes from a citrus hybrid that's indigenous to Japan. It's called Amanatsu, basically kind of shaped like an orange. So how you would enjoy it is Phoebe, you basically pick up these sweets and break them okay. into bite-sized pieces and then okay. you dip them into the sake, you soak them. Okay, and this sake, please remind me. Sorry, it's the, the sake you're soaking it in is our honjozo. Oh. Yeah, we know that from last we night. We might have just <laughs> even tried that last night. Gordon told me to think of it as one very long tasting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me bring this a little bit closer. Thank you. Um, I love this sake. Oh, it's a really beautiful cup too. And it's, yeah, it's got a, um, I don't know if we can get a close-up of this cup. Um, you can see the, there's a little moon inside it. It's very simple and very elegant. It's, it's made, the, the cup is wooden and it comes from a very, well, there's two or three trees it might come from. Um, maybe the saccharin or the cherry tree. So, so okay. please Do you have take any off the um, recommended order? Should I start with the... As you wish. I, I don't think there's a recommended okay. order. Sorry, can you remind me what this one was again, please? Oh, um, this is meant to look like the bark. Uh, how do I say the bark of the trees? Of the, the pine tree. And yeah, it's and it's called with... a, a, a takumatsu. It's a senbei with molasses on the outside. Oh, molasses. Yeah. Okay, so should I try just like this? Uh, first? Dip it first. This is my first time <laughs> dipping a sweet <laughs> sake, so I just have to acknowledge this. Yeah, moment. take it. Take your time. I've done pairing, but never dipping. Yeah. Okay. The suspense. The suspense is killing us. <laughs> I'm so sorry. There's a lot of pressure on there. So, first of all, I um, 
I, I tried the bit that had been dipped in the sake. So I got this, you know, wonderful sake flavor rushing in. And then as I dip through this, the sembe is very porous and light. So it kind of soaked into the, the rice cake. And then finally, molasses is a very strong flavor, as you all know. That kind of came through and was like, hello, here I am with that wonderful syrup of sweetness, which is what's left behind in my mouth. Um, I think alcoholic sweets are the way to go. Yeah. yeah basically, <laughs> that's my summary. <laughs> yeah. um, that was, I've done a lot of, um, I've traveled a lot in Japan, trying a lot of regional foods, regional sweets and sake. Um, this is a new experience and I, I'm very much impressed. Oh, I'm so glad. Um, I want to mention a story about Noguchi Toji. I, I you know I have many stories, but um, as, as you're, you know, go ahead, nibble away. Um, I just want to mention he has quite a sweet tooth. Um, and of course, he understands sake so well. But even though he's so experienced with sake and enjoys sweets, he never thought the two of them went well together. So I think it's quite interesting that he was able to meet with the confectionery and then have a change of mind. He changed his opinion. He now believes that it's possible to pair sweets and sake quite well. Whereas yeah. before he thought that they didn't jive together. I feel like there's a movement towards that. There is, I think, a bar in Tokyo now where you can have traditional like nenikiri, which is sort of made with um, bean paste yeah. sweets that you can pair with sake. And I know a few people just on the sake scene that I've met through talking to people in sake bars because that's how you get to know things. And yeah. one of them is just a sake fan. And every night he pairs a different sake with a different sweet. Sometimes just ice cream, different ice creams um, bought from the convenience store. That's store. foreshadowing. Oh. Something's coming like ice cream, but please continue. Oh, fabulous. Okay, <laughs> so I tried this one. Yeah, please, the next Can you one. remind me what this is exactly? Oh. Yeah. Sorry, I, I missed your explanation, so I was very much concentrating <laughs> on that. That's a fine. Um, but this is. This kind of starts off looking like it's going to be popcorn, but it's kind of sugary and it kind of dissolves in your mouth. So when it's got the alcohol and it kind of dissolves, it's a texture yes. experience. It kind of oh, melts. What was this one? Sorry? Um, I don't know if I actually explained it well enough. Uh, Yuai san, remind me what we call this sweet. It's sugary. It's seka. It's seka. Yeah. Seka. Excuse me. Seka. Snowflower. Yeah. Snowflower. Yeah. Could Is be that the meaning? Yeah, it means Japanese no seka. flour. Oh, the car would be flour. And the set. Set is uh, snow. Snow. Ah, oh, okay. All yeah. oh, right. Wonderful. That was, again, it. So unique, right? And then this, I remember Amanatsu, and what's the main body of this? Should we have a look? Oh, it's, I thought it would be hard, but it's yeah. actually um, jelly like in the middle. Can you see that? Can you see? slightly jelly-ish on the texture. And it looks just like the cliffs outside of the quarry. It's really unique. So it's really indicative of the quarry across the street. That really, um, yeah. I noticed that on the way in. I was not expecting to see a giant cliff face. Having come from these amazing flat plains where we're yeah. looking at the moment, it's a really wonderful season here because all the rice fields are full of water. Mm -hmm. So you can see all the reflections of the trees and houses stretching out. And then there's this quarry cliff, which is really quite a striking contrast in the scenery around this area. Yeah. Okay, Please. sorry, I know I'm taking too long. I'm taking too long, sorry. <laughs> that's it, that's it. Well, I guess that is my citrus that I was thinking about when, um, mm. oh, my uh, cup's <laughs> the one over here, <laughs> the one in the silver cup. Um, yeah. But that is beautiful. The sharpness kind of pops through and it's really refreshing and sweet at the same time. It's a little bit dangerous because if things are purely sweet, you know, you kind of get fed up. At least I personally can't eat a lot. And then the citrus is like, oh, but we're a little bit sharp here. Yeah. <laughs> so I feel like I, I could have a very dangerous relationship with this. Yeah. So as Phoebe continues to nibble, um, I'd like to be able to talk about the second part of our dessert. Um, it's ice cream and not just any ice cream. It's made oh. from our sake leaves or our kasu, if you will. The kasu is the pressed sake cake that comes from pressing 
cloudy socket and the clear socket. Sorry, I'm just going to interrupt. I know yeah. I'm talking too much. But oh, I was yeah. not expecting the how acidic this, this one was yeah. and how well it pairs with the sweet. Yeah. Because um, in conventional logic of pairing, yeah. um, when it comes to sake, sweet with sweet, it tends to be the rule. Mm -hmm. So I'm very impressed with how this is matching. Yeah. That is a very intriguing combination. Absolutely. Sorry. No, it's very unique. So um, along with the uh, sake kasu ice cream, it's actually served with tea, hot tea. And so this is the, the finish of our sake tasting experience. So uh, please enjoy the tea, but sake kasu brings something magical to ice cream. It's really amazing. And this kind of um, confection, we can call it like a manaka. You know, it's uh, got a crust on the outside, but in the middle is this really umami-laden ice cream. So please take a bite. Thank you. I'm so tempted to take a little photo. Yeah. Sorry, I know, I know you're, you're all watching as well, but I'm like... I so while Phoebe, while Phoebe's talking, uh, let me just mention some things. You know, we're on Instagram. We want to be... <laughs> friends on social media. <laughs> so we have an Instagram site, Noguchi Nahiko. And if you want to visit our tasting room someday, um, you have to visit our website, uh, noguchinahiko.co.jp. We take reservations in advance. Uh, we, you, you're charged by credit card. And the hours are restricted. It's basically as it stands now from 2.15, go, 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 take a oh. bite. <laughs> I told you you'd be happy to try this. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you later. <laughs> I've got a date with this. Yeah. Um, Saki Kazu ice cream is one of my most favorite kinds of ice yeah, cream. It too. Is, it's such a beautiful, rich, and intriguing combination. Like yeah. it, I, I adore, I adore sake kasu ice cream. And I just um, have to know what tea are you having with it? Oh, um, it's just a warm oolong tea, right? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a hoji cha. Kanago cha. Kanago cha. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Yeah. So kaga is nearby, and the, the tea comes from kaga. I actually haven't tried it yet. It's, it's kind of a hoji cha, Ada, but specific to, to Kaga. Perfect. That is the tea I thought should pair perfectly with sake, sake kasu oh. ice cream. Um, I'll just mention the, the Toan or tasting rooms closed on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and courses start from 5,500 yen, but that includes tax. And uh, recently, there's a bus service that comes here, so um, it's possible to visit here quite easily if you want to be a drinker and be responsible. So now I, I guess it's time for closing remarks. We're about at the hour point um, of our presentation. And again, we're so grateful, Ada and Oweno san, uh, for having you host us. Thank you so much. I'm sorry, I'm still eating sake kazu ice cream, but um, in terms of the pairing, I feel like the world of sake is it's just on the, it's still on the entrance way to pairing sake with many different yeah. kinds of food. And it's been such an effort, I feel, um, especially among the younger generations here in Japan over the past few years, in trying to make sake more accessible to um, modern consumers. And I this is a great example of just how many different avenues there are for enjoying sake in so many different ways. And I just want to reiterate what I said earlier, that when you start to pair sake with different foods, mm -hmm. that sake changes. And so, you know, you're getting two or three different taste experiences just from one sake. And I, I think that's one of the, as we would say in Japanese, miryoku, one of its um, sort of charms. And um, that's one of the reasons I really, really, Love this drink. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, if I think about Noguchi Toji's career, you know, his sake has changed and he has the, the open mind. Um, I think we have called this uh, Shoshin, which is beginner's mind. Uh, 
his first mind. So even though he's an expert, uh, he is still open to learning new things. In, in the mind of an expert, maybe there's not so many options, but because he has this beginner's mind, there's many options for him. Um, do you have any questions from the audience that we can take, Ada? Um, so um, we just wanted to confirm um, that side dish that she had with the uh, sake rice, you said it was shiso seeds? Uh, yes. Yeah, the seeds, the seeds from the... Yeah. You know, when you go to a Japanese sushi restaurant, they use a fresh one as a decoration, but you can pickle that with a soy sauce and uh, also a, a sometime shiso leaf itself, and maybe they will uh, pickle with uh, some uh, sake with it too. And it's really crunchy. I, I, my mom used to cook it. I might make it for us. And that was like, I, I only need that without anything. <laughs> you can, you can sprinkle wow. seeds on the top of the rice. And that's the only thing you need with uh, some miso soup and that's it. And it's very simple. It has a, such a really, really nice texture. And uh, that the seed itself has a, that, that minty character of that, that uh, shiso itself. But at the same time, you have a pickled flavor of soy sauce. And I don't know that one is a pickle with soy sauce, but most of them are pickled with a little bit soy saucy with it. So. Yeah, yeah, it was similar to sukidani. Um, yeah. And I really agree with you in that it has a flavor that's not too sweet, not too salty. And so I could certainly just eat it by itself. Some pickles yeah. really have to be balanced by the white rice in order to kind of soften their, the, the intensity of their flavor. But this, yeah, I would, I would eat straight. So I'm, I'm 100% on board with what you said. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so I have just one random question from the audience. Riley Chung was there in 2019 and he wanted to know if that's Saito-san, but I think maybe the other assistant in the room. Uh, what, what about Saito-san again? Uh, they wanted to know if that person in the room is Saito-san because they visited in 2019 oh. and I think that's who served them. I'm sorry, he's not, he's not here today. Oh, okay. <laughs> Um, so I actually have a question. Is the menu seasonal? Like, does it change like every couple weeks or every uh, season or month? Absolutely. It actually changes every month. Every month? Yeah, absolutely. So what, what you see today may not be here next month. Is that for the food or? And then like usually uh, the sake oh, stays about the same. Uh, you know, the, the, the sake is not going to change quite frequently. But for example, the, the iris leaves that were cut into the sake, um, this is traditionally served in May. So this is one sake that if you wanted it, it wouldn't be quite the same next month. So we'll find another sake to serve at that time. Very nice. And I know you guys do come out with some seasonal sake. Sorry about that. Do you guys also uh, have those available for tasting in the tasting room sometimes? Well, it depends. Uh, typically, we don't. Uh, so the other day, um, I was looking for our spring seasonal sake, which is my personal favorite of the sakes that we've made, and it wasn't available at the tasting room. So it, it changes depending on availability. These seasonal sakes are so popular that they sell out almost immediately. So we push out as many as we can across Japan. They're just not available as much as we like, as much as I want it. <laughs> yeah, I saw that one. It has like a cute like pink label this time, right? Yes, it does. Mm. Good. Right. Oh, please. You have a particular season and sake pairing, a particular season where you think the ingredients of the food go particularly well with um, the sake made here. Is there a particular mm. season that you like the best when it comes to pairing or Food and sake with uh, I, I like the variety of it, not just the cups, but the variety of temperatures. Um, when I when I was brewing sake here, we had a 50 year snowstorm, like the 50 year high. Wow. And I had three meters of frozen snow on top of my heater. So I didn't have any heat in my apartment. So um, this was quite difficult, but at the same time, 
it was an opportunity to try warm sake. So to try the Kan sake, the very hot sake, or Atsukan or Tobikiri Kan, where we get upwards of 120, 125, 130, I like changing the temperature of the sake. And then I'm very informal about what I'm gonna have the sake with. I really prefer cheese as a snack, I always have. And so I prefer cheese like a Taleggio, a Mimolet, a Gouda, and I try this cheese with the sake at different temperatures. That pleases oh, me to know it. <laughs> I love the fact that more and more places here are offering cheese um, plates as otsumami as a dish to go with sake. Yeah. And a lot of places will also offer sake kazi cream cheese, or one that's also been pickled in saikyo miso, which is a yeah. um, a sweet white miso from Kyoto that has a high kind of um, high sugar ratio in it, and that goes really nicely. Um, I think cheese is a uh, fantastic. Aaron, yeah. Sure. So if, if you're home in the United States and you enjoy cheese, but typically might have it alone or with wine, I like to promote it as a good possibility for sake. They both are like cousins to each other. They both have umami. Um, mm -hmm. They both complement each other so well, really. I prefer pairing cheese with sake than wine. I think it yeah. goes better personally, but I don't know. I'm a sake fan. So. <laughs> I'm prepared, well, to die. I'm prepared to die on that. Yeah. <laughs> and Laura Blackwell agrees with you guys. Cheese and sake pairings are her favorite. And she also wanted to know, do you guys have any other uh, pairing recommendations for the Miyama Nishiki Yamahai? Mm. Oh, this one here. Mm. I'll, let you, I'll let you sit, please. Okay, I'm just going to have another sip and throw yeah. the question to you whilst I think. Um, <laughs> I, I would try a caprese salad. Um, I think there's something about this sake which reminds me of the, the soil from which it comes and it has a, a grassy note to me. And if I had this with a caprese salad, the tomato and the cheese and the olive oil, I think they really accentuate this. And I really like black pepper, so I might have a little bit more black pepper than normal to get some spicy notes out of the sake. What do you think? Well, when you said salad, and I was sipping it, and I could taste the acidity, so I also thought of citrus fruit. But I yeah. wondered if you could even go with a salad with fresh, like grapefruit in, whether that would actually oh, work, God, or whether that, that, that would crash or not. Sometimes, though, like I would say that I am in the very entrance of trying to learn, you know, how to pair sake with different foods. And actually, in my I studied the WSET last year, and my sake teacher became a very good friend, and he's also British. Um, we spent some time finding British pies in Tokyo and trying to pair it with sake, and we did not have any success. Uh, so sometimes things just don't work out how you expect them to work out. Yeah. Um, but I would be interested to try a, a fresh kind of uh, vinegary or citrusy salad mm. with this uh, oh, sake for sure. I think that's a great idea. Awesome. And, you know, I, I think you can't really go wrong with your gut. So once you taste something, it's like, what does it make you hungry for? And that is probably the best pairing you could have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a lovely way of putting it. All right. I don't think there are any other questions. So did we want to go ahead and do our closing statements? Yeah. Well, we're just so grateful that you could be here today. And the invitation for people around the world to come to Japan um, like so many of us who live here, we want to extend the invitation with open arms. And on behalf of all of us that work for Noguchi Toji at Noguchi Nahiko Sake Institute, we want you to try our sakes in America or wherever you live. And we want you to come to our tasting room. Please try what we had today. So that's our message to you. Thank you very much. Thank you guys so much. Um, so you guys can see in the back, let me try to spotlight that, um, that they have their whole service, well, not their whole service team, but the service team today, as well as the president of the company, Huma asano -san, in the back there. Uh, thank you guys so much for having this event with us. Uh, I think we learned a lot and I'm very, very jealous. And although Gordon didn't get to drink or taste much today, that is, what falls upon being a host, right? And what you receive and back is happiness, <laughs> the happiness of your, of your guests. Um, thank you again so much, Phoebe, uh, for joining us. Um, she is, I believe, a journalist, right? So you, you are writing on all these amazing foods and drinks out there. So please um, follow her, find her, follow her uh, at an appropriate distance, right? <laughs>
um, we'll have her information in the follow-up email for you guys, as well as more information about Noguchi Naohiko Sake Institute. And Ueno-san, did you have anything you'd like to say? Yeah, thank you, uh, Gordon and uh, Noguchi team and Phoebe. And the most importantly, all the audience attended this uh, session. Hope you enjoyed this seminar. Uh, now, Noguchi is available in US and you can purchase it online at the True Sake uh, in San Francisco, MM Sake in Los Angeles, California. And also you can purchase at the Sakaya, New York uh, City. And those are the online shop. And there are many restaurants now carries uh, Noguchi Sake in US and Hawaii. So uh, look for it and buy it. And you can visit them at this uh, uh, very nice tasting room. And I've been there, it's very nice. And I hope Phoebe, you have uh, uh, plenty of time to enjoy Komatsu City and Ishikawa Prefecture. One thing guys you should know is Ishikawa is very rich in the culture, especially food culture. I mean, there is no ending uh, if you're in Ishikawa Prefecture learning about food culture. It's a long, long history and there's such a depth in both the food culture, also food lighter. There are so many famous lighter uh, uh, born from, uh, coming from uh, Ishikawa. So- uh, Oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So I would like to ask you to send me some information later on. <laughs> no, no, just, ju just ask, ask Iwai-san and uh, Asano-san. They can tell you where to go and which- <laughs> And uh, it's still in the it's still in the morning at your time. Enjoy your lunch, and uh, I hope you you know you, know, you can uh, hang out and stay at that uh, some something to eat at Komatsu or Ishikawa uh, prefectures. What's up? What was the Ishikawa's uh, uh, capital? I'm sorry. Kanazawa. I'm so brain dead. Yeah, Kanazawa. <laughs> you have time to spend more time in Kanazawa. And I hope you, you guys, the listeners, I think you need, don't just visit Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka. And there is a, another uh, part of Japan, in, especially in the uh, Sea of Japan side, which is the most famous one is Kanazawa, Ishikawa, and Komatsu. So, don't forget that and uh, book your book your flight and book your uh, reservation at Tenomuchi uh, Naohiko Institute uh, right now, soon. All right, guys. I just want to, oh, sorry. I just want to jump in and say that Kanazawa is one of my favorite cities and now the bullet train goes directly there from Tokyo. So you have no excuses for not visiting this area. Yeah. 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 Thank you, right, you guys started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, thank you guys so much. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>